This is the Samsung Galaxy S24 disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. I also did a drop and scratch test on this phone, so if you want to see those, make sure to check out my recent videos. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at the SIM tray. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate with either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the glass backplate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off, so you won't have to take apart the phone if you needed to replace those. Now there are 20 Phillips screws that have to be removed. Here's a look at the wireless charging coil and an FC antenna. Unlike the S24 Plus and S24 Ultra, the S24 doesn't have an ultra wideband antenna. There's also graphite film to help transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. Here's a look at the top earpiece speaker assembly. This is the speaker itself, and there's an antenna board on the top corner. The 12 megapixel front facing camera is glued in place with a cure in place gasket, so if you needed to replace that, you'd have to use a razor blade or an X Acto knife to carefully cut the glue around the camera and pry the camera out. Looking at the main board, there's a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 50 megapixel primary, and a 10 megapixel telephoto lens. The main and telephoto lens both have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top, and the LED flash is located here. Just like the S24 Ultra, this main board is a dual layer board design. The connectors for the cameras are located on the back, which can be disconnected by just popping them off. Each of the cameras have their own metal housing. Back to the main board, there's another microphone located here, the proximity sensor, and there's a thermal pad-like compound on the back shield to help transfer heat. Once that's peeled back, we can see a thermal pad which is seated on top of the RAM and processor. And here's the bottom speaker assembly. 
The vibrator motor or haptic feedback motor is located in the speaker assembly right behind the speaker. Looking at these flex cables, this flex cable connects the main board to the screen and these two connect the main board to the subboard. On this specific model of the S24, there are also two 5G millimeter wave antennas. One is located on the top corner and one on this side. Not every region version will come with these antennas since not every region uses 5G millimeter wave technology. However, all the phones do have sub 6 GHz 5G. There are three Phillips screws which are holding down the subboard and two which are holding down the millimeter wave antenna on the side. And here's a look at the 5G millimeter wave antenna. And looking at the subboard, we can see the primary microphone located over here and the charger port located next to it. The SIM reader is located on the other side and there's a rubber gasket around the charger port. Now to remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. Here's a look at the 4000 mAh battery. Once the battery adhesive pouch has been peeled back, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery and the motherboard. And it is larger than the vapor chamber on the S23. It looks to be almost double the size. This is the flex cable for the volume keys and the power button. To replace that, you have to just gently peel off the flex cable and pull out this metal bracket from inside the frame. Here's a look at that. The actual physical buttons can be removed from the frame by just pulling them out. Moving on, there's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the speaker opening on the frame, as well as the microphone openings on the bottom and top. If anyone's worried about damaging the microphone or the filter by accidentally inserting the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you don't need to worry since both the filter and the microphone are seated above the hole, so they won't get damaged. And the second hole on the top of the frame is just an air vent hole. Most screen replacements will come with the frame assembly pre-attached, but if you need to replace the screen by itself, once you take apart the back of the phone and disconnect the cable for the screen, you'd have to heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath and pry the screen off from the frame. But when it comes to these newer phones, since they make the bezel or border around the screen very thin, there's almost no room to apply adhesive or glue to the glass to hold it down, so they apply adhesive behind the screen itself and adhere it to the frame. So that makes prying off a working screen almost impossible to save. Since the screens are very fragile, and the fact that the back of the screen is glued to the frame, no matter how much heat you apply and how careful you are, you're almost guaranteed to damage the screen when you're prying it off. So because of that, I'm not going to pry this working screen off, since I don't want to destroy the screen. But for most cases, people who are replacing the screen are replacing a broken or damaged screen, so there is no worry about damaging it at that point. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 9 out of 10. And now it's time to put it back together.
Once everything is back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.